Greetings, my name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 5. In the last episode, we continued our uh, little game of uh, playing the role of Mion, as we both uh, pretended to be her while going to her school in order to fool her friends into thinking nothing is wrong, that she hasn't disappeared, as well as uh, continue our game of covertly gathering any information we can that could lead to uh, Satoshi's whereabouts from uh, the village leaders. Namely, through a, a town meeting that uh, Mion was supposed to hold, that uh, Shion went in Mion's place, unbeknownst to everybody. And then later on, after said meeting, getting Mayor uh, Kiichiro to come, with, to come with her to the Sonzaki house in order to uh, ask him a series of questions. As well as about, about Satoshi, as well as uh, trying to determine well, whether, or not she, whether or not she could uh, view him as an ally. Long story short, both events ended up going very poorly as far as she's concerned. In the case of the town meeting, she uh, became she's become more convinced here that um, everyone wouldn't that everyone in the village leadership would not hesitate to get rid of any potential enemies to the village in the most lethal, ma lethal manner possible, and would actually hit, derive us some sick pleasure doing it, which is probably what ended up happening to uh, Satoshi. And in the case of Keichiro. Things were going well at first, until he started bad-mouthing Satoshi. Then uh, Shion ended up flying off the handle, and, well, now he's also downstairs along with uh, Mion, along with Mion and is basically uh, being tortured by Shion for information. To uh, no avail so far. All in all, everybody is not having a good time right now. Especially the people downstairs. And I think that by and large sums everything up, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit continue and see whatever, whatever, what else we're, we're going to be in for. Good morning, Reina, Keiichi. No, I was too busy making my enemies suffer greatly. It's a very taxing job. ネタの Honestly, she might as well be in a manga, given given the given current events. I went to the fruit shrine to join the youth group in their search for the mayor. Since I knew there was no way he would be found, it was really boring for me. Well, just enduring sleeplessness wasn't that bad. Sleepiness, excuse me. Not if you considered what Kimiyoshi had to go through since last night. He had been hanging from the ceiling and couldn't even fall asleep or sit down, since he had to stay on tiptoes the whole time. Like I said, the old man's not having a good time. At all. The teacher explained to us that the mayor had gone missing and asked us if we knew anything. A couple of people said some things, but they were irrelevant. To me, this issue meant nothing, but it was all my classmates were talking about. I observed Keiji Mebara. I had no idea if any type of danger was drawing closer to him. Maybe I'd call him again tonight, pretending to be Shion. What do you mean, pretending to be Shion? I told him some outrageous stuff last night, so he panicked. But I was sure he calmed down after today, after a day. At that time, I heard a little girl's laughter. It was Rika Farood. The last survivor of the Farood family and their current head. However, she really wasn't treated as one. During the family councils, she often draw pictures or take a nap in the hag's bed. She wasn't even invited to last night's meeting. 
It's hard to believe such a little girl was responsible for part of the curse system. Try impossible. How oops. However, even though she wasn't she wasn't in a respected position in the, as the head of her fruit family, there were plenty of old people who worshipped her as a reincarnation of Orishiro sama. I heard from someone that Riku Farood was rather odd. It seemed to behave as if she knew she was that reincarnation. Given my theory on the time loop stuff, she might as well be a reincarnated something. Because, I mean, she technically would be. Maybe Takano-san had told, had told me at, that at the library when she was alive. When Rika Farood became worried about something, the elderly people who worshipped her would make arrangements. It was very similar to the Sonozaki family, whom is also the same system as used for the curse. Yeah, okay. So, your whole your whole system your whole system theory is pre predicated on the idea that the ones that are pulling the strings throughout the whole village is the Sonzaki family, yes? Then even if she te even if she even if she technically is would be an enforcer as far as you're concerned of this curse system, wouldn't it be kind of odd for said system to be taking orders from uh, Rika Farood unless I don't know, it was already given the go ahead by um Someone high up on the Sonzaki chain. I, I mean, I mean, I'm trying. I'm just trying to keep track and understand the logic behind your theories here. I wonder, does Rika Farud know anything about the deaths of Takuno San and Tomotaki San? Probably more than any of us knows, really. What does she think of people sneaking into the ritual storehouse? Does she know who snuck in and what happened to those people? As the one managing the storehouse, it was possible that she noticed the intruders first. You're kind of forgetting she was also right in the middle of a performance during the, the Wainanagashi Festival. She really wasn't in any position to be monitoring anything. In fact, she was the only one who could have noticed it. She must have passed on that information, which was why the curse was executed. That foolish cage he turned the light on when we went into the ritual storehouse. And you didn't stop him. That light switch could have been connected to some kind of alarm. And what kind of alarm system are we talking about exactly? Rika Farood, the leader of the Farood family. Maybe getting to know her would be a good idea. I asked her rather directly. It was hard to tell if she understood I was asking her in place of Sonzaki family head, instead of as me on Sonzaki. You know, since I'm pretty damn sure that she knows me on very, very well on account of probably living of living hundreds, dozens, if not hundreds of different lifetimes up to this point, going going by my time loop theory and she being, you know, the time loopy. I wonder if she's noticing any very subtle off behaviors about you that would indicate that the person that she's speaking to may be may not be me on. Like, how perceptive are you, Rika? Rika answered. The news hadn't been made public yet. Yes, she knew about it. Excuse me. I don't know where I got that second yet. Although she looked immature, perhaps she truly was the head of the Farood family. I try to be vague, to see how Rika Farood would react. I've been thinking that she had nothing to do with the underside of Hinamizawa, since she was always treated it like a child. However, Rika had just said things about the incident which normal people shouldn't know about anything about. 
weren't you just speculating in the last episode that you were pretty certain that Riga had something to do with the underworld, and now you're saying that you didn't think she she has had anything to do with it until she just told you what she just said? I feel like I'm, I might be missing some details here, and I might be getting confused on a few th things, but it kind of feels like as though you're kind of sending me mixed messages here when, with regards to how you view your suspects here. That proved she belonged to the Undersides Network. Well, not necessarily. I mean, she is the head of, of the Fruit family. I mean... Even if she is a young child, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't, I wouldn't assume it'd be that far fetched to assume that she would at least have some p passing knowledge of what happened to those two. She answered the question about Tomotaki-san and Takano-san fairly quickly, but took a little longer to answer this time. She's probably gauging us right now. Did she have to think about it? Shit. The look on her face never changes. It's impossible to figure out what she's thinking. どうでもいいってことはないでしょう。それじゃあけじめにならないのはわかってる。僕はちゃんと反省したならそれでいいと思いますです。Her response was unexpected. Especially after seeing all the old people get so furious last night. To trespass in the ritual storehouse was blasphemy against Orishiro-sama. The village elders had said those intruders deserved to die. Yet the leader of the Farood family, who protected the sacred storehouse for ritual implements, said that they felt remorse for it, then that was fine. I recalled how people thought of Rika Farood's father during the dam conflict. Yes. Her father was called an opportunist back then. Really? I thought he was called a fence-sitter. He didn't agree with the Onikafuchi guardians, who had resisted violently during the conflict. Like father, like daughter. I aggressively grabbed Rika Farood by the collar. Careful what you do here. It might not look good to any passerby. Huh? Could you at least try to pretend to talk to her like me on probably would? You're not exactly giving a good cover here right now. Oh. <laughs> I laughed at myself. I was told the same thing by someone else, and was now saying it to Rika. I I am quite certain that she knows full well how, how 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 big a crime it is. I mean, she got spanked for it at one point, in order to in order to take the blame for Satoko. I'm I'm pretty sure she has a good idea. Although I suppose you wouldn't really know that, would you? About that incident. わかってるじゃない。そこに毛枯れを持ち込んだんだよ、あの uh, she kind of already gave you an answer. If they felt feel remorse, then they should be forgiven. Rika really didn't usually wear any expression whatsoever, making it impossible to tell what she was thinking. Have you looked at her face? She can emote just fine. But while I grabbed her by the collar and stared at her, I could tell somehow. 
Rika was a little disturbed. I sensed she was trying to see what I was thinking in turn. You know, I just now I just now realized something. We ran we ran into uh, Rika shortly after it looked like she had some kind of uh, scuffle or a tense encounter with somebody back in chapter two, didn't we? Followed by that conversation that uh, Keiichi and, and and she had regarding well what he did along with everyone else he went to the shrine with. So this is probably this we're we're seeing this encounter right now, aren't we? Well, I know it's not gonna go well. <laughs> You know? Yeah, never mind. だから罪の大きさに比例した毛締めで罪を清めなければならないの。わかるよね。お社様は別に最後で見られても怒らないのですよ。はあ？あんた何言ってんの？ Do you need to get? Do you need an ear swab or a con swab? To get the earwax out of your ears, Shion. Ano naka o micha dame na no wa. Ano naka ni kuai dogu ga ippai aru kara na no desu. Miru to kitto kuagaru hito mo iru to omoimasu no desu. Dakara dare ni mo mise nai yo ni shite aru no desu yo. Mita hito mo kitto kuakatta to omoimasu. Dakara. I don't know. I wonder if Takano can even feel fear. Um, Shion, you're kind of forgetting how, how uh, the elders in this village view uh, Rika. You know, reincarnation of Orishiro sama. And you know, that too, being the Shrine Maiden. So, you know, that's double the persuasion power. Rika nod yes without hesitation. I can't believe the lie she's coming up with. I'm not surprised. I'm shocked. Why don't you just rub some extra salt into that set of wounds, why don't you? Why the fuck not? おやしろ様は then how did he die? If there's anyone who would really have an idea as to how your father died, it would be you, wouldn't it? Care to give me something? Yes. If she did that, she'd be a narcissist. I realized. She was in a position to know as much as the other two family heads. About damn time you noticed, you realized. As proof, she talked about this year's incident as though it was nothing. Yet she could fang ignorance with a serious face. She sure is something. She's even better than me. You won't get any argument from me on that. 
I slapped her a few times and pushed her to the floor. Child endangerment! Physical assault! Rika, having tumbled downward, looked up at me with tears in her eyes. そもそもあんたが最後伝の鍵が重いから簡単なものに付け替えたいって言い出したのがことのほったなんだよね。そうですよ。硬くて僕では大変だったので、君よしに相談して簡単な鍵に付け替えてもらったのです。あんたがその程
I doubt he died from tiptoeing all night, but sometimes a human can go very easily. He already told me everything I wanted to hear, and he doesn't know anything else anyway. On top of that, he was responsible for spreading the infection that was the cursed system of Orishira-sama. His sins are very heavy. I really liked Uncle Kimiyoshi. He had always been kind. The hag was so tough on her relatives, and that's why she, he was extra nice to me. When we talked yesterday, I was so happy to hear him say he would forgive Shion. Well, I doubt he's going to be in a forgiving mood now. Even if you let him, even if you let him go at this point, he even said he would fight the hag to save her. That made me very happy. Don't worry. If Xion Chan feels bad about what she has done, she won't be demoned away. Leave it to me. I felt such warmth inside of me. It's kind. Of, it's kind of like what Rika was telling you. So that's kind of two people reassuring you that nothing would have happened to you if you felt genuine remorse. I felt such warmth inside of me. I almost shivered. I was so happy, yet so very sad. For he continued to say that Satoshi-kun deserved to die. He said those nice things because he wanted to make me unhappy, since she was worried about Shion. Satoshi-kun deserved to die because he was a member of the cursed Hojo family, but Shion-chan of the Sonozaki family did not. That's what he meant. In other words, to the leaders of the village, including Kimiyoshi, Members of the Hojo family are more contemptible than insects. They didn't care if they lived or died. Their sin was not, the, was not only that they despised the Hojo family so, but that they let their hate that hatred infect the rest of the village. Therefore, everyone in the village deserves to be a victim of the curse of Orishiro-sama. Kimiyoshi and the others created an environment that excused murder in that name. You're just let you're just blaming Okay. But let's just say for the sake of argument that you're right, that there really is a, a curse a curse system in place like you speculate. Does the entire village do you honestly think that the entire village, every man, woman, and child Thinks the exact same way as the people as the people you're targeting. It may be a small village, but every person's different. I'm sure that there is a lot of very forgiving, 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 and understanding people here. If you just be willing to, you know, consider their existence, talk to them, something. My, my point is, I don't really think that an entire village of people <laughs> needs to get punished for what its leaders may or may not have done. It's kind of unfair. I mean, if they're, I mean, if they're all guilty of anything, it's just getting very violently protective of one, of over wanting to defend their home. But that's a very understandable motive. That was so. If Takano-san and Tomotaki-san hadn't committed the serious crime of trespassing in the ritual storehouse. Who the hell... Who the hell is this guy? Then the Satoko Hojo, the last member of the Hojo family, and Tepe Hojo... Wait, this is Tepe? Huh. I was a, kind of... I was kind of imagining a, a pudgy slob, a slobby looking guy. This man cannot pick up a feather duster to save his fucking life and has to make Satoko clean everything? This guy? Yeah, okay. 
it, it, I mean, I guess, uh, I don't know. The fact that you don't, that you don't look as sh at, that you, well, you know what? I would still, I would still hate you just as much, even if you were, were out of shape. So, you know what? Fuck it. Just ig ignore me. Who have been hiding Okinomiya might have been the victims. Satoko Hojo. She was always around Satoshi-kun. She expected Satoshi-kun to help her every time she cried. She was one of the people who cornered him. If Satoko wasn't that much of a burden, Satoshi-kun wouldn't have killed his aunt. Shion. You're forgetting that the aunt was a paranoid fucking lunatic and that uh, Tepe here is a fucking is a fucking uh, overbearing sleaze ball. Even if even if Satoko just balled everything up, they would both of them still would have been abused by these two. Day and night. Their situation re really really wouldn't have changed much at all. I'm convinced of that because they're just awful people or were awful people. Well, one of them is I guess one of them is technically still alive in this timeline, but still. Like, could you please just think of the bigger picture here? Somebody told Satoshi-kun to commit that murder. We don't know that. And to hide the evidence of his connection to the Mastermind, Satoshi-kun was demoned away. That's what Uushi thought. If Satoshi-kun hadn't killed his aunt, maybe he wouldn't have been chosen as last year's victim. Because the commands were vague, after all, the curse of Urishirasama fell upon the Hojo family as a whole. It didn't matter which member of the family died. His aunt had a terrible reputation in the neighborhood. She didn't communicate with her neighbors. She was always throwing fits, and there was nothing nice about her in any way. Exactly! And that is why I'm saying that even if Satoko didn't cry constantly, she would have still been a major pain in the ass for both Satoko, for both Satoko and Satoshi. Even if Satoshi-kun didn't kill her, the curse would have fallen upon her sooner or later. Their aunt was the first victim. There needed to be another Hojo to claim, calm the curse. According to a rumor, their uncle was living somewhere in Okinomiya with his lover. However, Okinomiya was a little different from Hinamizawa. The Sonozaki family was powerful there as well, of course. But it would have been more difficult in Okinomiya to demon someone away. So naturally, Satoshi-kun and Satoko who were still in Hinamizawa, became the targets. Which one should be cursed? That was simple. Sotoko, of course. She was snobbing, lacking in matters and manners. Based on your own assumptions of hearsay and only a couple interactions, at if at, if at best, if you can call them that. Everyone in the neighborhood liked Satoshi-kun. If he was the son of the Hojo couple who betrayed the village during the dam conflict. Compared to Satoko, he didn't deserve to die. NEITHER OF THEM DESERVE TO DIE! Therefore, the actual victims of last year's curse should have been his aunt and Satoko. Satoshi-kun was suddenly all alone. His mean aunt and uncle were gone. His sister, who was a burden to him all his life? How could you possibly know that? And are you forgetting that he act- yeah, Of course you're forgetting that he actually loved her- That he actually loved her. Despite- Despite the- Despite the burden that she- The, the, the burdens that she herself put on him. Unintentionally, I must stress. Because, you know, small child in an abusive household, 
I mean, she's not going to be happy about it. Who would? Satoshi-kun was such a nice person. He would be sad, although he'd realize he was finally free. But time would heal him. I'd even help. He didn't have to live in his house in Hinamizawa. There were plenty of empty rooms in the apartment block where I lived. And you think that, uh, the Sonozaki family wouldn't catch wind of this eventually? And that they wouldn't try to do something here? Against you and him? As in some, you know, commence some form of retribution? Because, you know, they wouldn't want you associating with, uh, <laughs> a member of the Hojo family. I could find him a part-time job, too. With who? I think, all, last I checked, all this, mo pretty much everyone in the Sozaki family does not like the Hojos. Oh, wait a minute. Oh my god damn it, I forgot. Mion set him up a part-time job somewhere. So, okay, maybe not all of them. My mistake. He didn't need to go to school in Hinamizawa. He could go to school with me in Okinomiya instead. He wouldn't know his way around, or really anything about the school there. So I'd be with Satoshi-kun all the time. I'd show him a shortcut to school, we'd go shopping, and I'd teach him many different things. What an unbelievably happy ending. To you, maybe. Satoshi-kun had been suffering so much. And I had been pushed away all, uh, and I had been pushed away all my life. But we would finally be happy. I enjoyed these sweet delusions, but I didn't have any more time to waste. I was sure there were plenty of old people who had been trying to get a hold of Oryu all morning, and who were going to try to catch me after I got home from school. Actually, the phone had been ringing constantly while I enjoyed my happy thoughts. When I answered the phone, I casually listened and replied. As I planned, Keichi Meibara is now known as the next curse victim within the underside of Hinamizawa. I also tried to let them know that the disappearance of the village chief had something to do with the fact that he changed the lock on the ritual storehouse's door. All the authorities in the underside came to realize the seriousness of trespassing in the storehouse. After all, one of the heads of the three families got punished. I wonder if they're actually just wondering, wait a minute. Why did the he why, why did one of the heads of the three families get punished for just simply helping change a lock? I'm pretty sure that cuz I'm pretty sure they're not as ruthless as you're making them out to be when it comes to enforcement of this stuff. They're all they're all probably thinking, what the hell's going on here? What does Mion know? One of the phone calls was from Uushi. He also heard about Kimiyoshi's disappearance, and he knew it had something to do with the changing of the lock. I'm impressed. He has some pretty good sources. But all he can do is catch whatever information he can get. There's no way for him to find out where it's coming from. I'd call Keiji Meibara again later tonight. Some of the more aggressive villagers may have already started to take action around him. I'm sure that by now, Keiji is feeling the danger that's coming toward him. Well, unfortunately for you, you're kind of wrong, and also right at the same time. He, he does feel a sense of danger coming, but it's not from what other people besides you are doing. If only you knew. I'd have to be careful that he doesn't get killed easily. If I can catch the enemy before they bit Keiichi, I could use him. I can use him again as bait. Keiichi Meibara. I haven't known him for that long. He's funny, if not intelligent. He'll never replace Satoshi Kun, but I do think he's fun to be around. There's just one thing I don't like about him. 
His perverted tendencies? He rubs my head far too often. Oh, so something pretty benign. His hand is as warm as Satoshi-kun's hand, which is why I can't stand it. Would it be more tolerable if he stuck an ice pack on his hand beforehand? But that's about it. Keiichi Meibara isn't Satoshi-kun's enemy. I don't hate him. He's just a useful idiot. He's fun to be around, but I wouldn't shed a tear for him if he became a victim of the curse. I won't prevent it, I won't prevent Keiichi Meibara from being killed, but I won't kill him myself either. I made arrangements for the curse to fall upon him, but I've never told anyone to kill him. Well, I suppose I did tell Rika Furu to take care of Keiichi Meibara. Yeah, so good job undermining undermining the system the system that uh, the curse system that you speculate about by being more direct with the orders. Wait a minute. To avenge Satoshi-kun, I'm doing exactly the same thing as the hag did. I'm using the exact same system that killed Satoshi-kun. Ironic, isn't it? Keiichi Meibara. I'm just using him. I told people to let the curse fall upon Keiichi, but I've been giving him appropriate warnings. I'm going to help him if he tries to live. If I catch all of my enemies. Maybe I'll let him loose. Maybe. Well, what harm? You just had said that he that he's not Satoshi's enemy, let alone... And I and, I'm, and I know that you don't see him as your enemy either. So really, what would be the harm in letting him go if you do catch all your enemy, all your enemies? I mean, he's just he's just a victim in all of this. He's different from Satoshi Kun. Satoshi Kun was tricked into killing his aunt, and was him killed himself afterwards, so there wouldn't be any evidence remaining. I won't kill Keiichi Me Meibara. Maybe. That's how I'm different from the hag. Oh, how this statement will age well. Your life is just full of ironies, isn't it, Xion? Evening was turning to night. I had to get dinner ready. I had to eat so I'd have enough strength to take revenge. This place was far from the town. This looks familiar. It would even get isolated during winter because of the snow. It's not unusual for a household like this to have two or three refrigerators. There were plenty of groceries left in them. I was glad I didn't have to go grocery shopping. I could hear the chorus of the Higurashi. People often say that the sound of the Higurashi brings back memories. But for me... It's the exact opposite. I've only ever heard the sound of the Higurashi in Hinamizawa. Therefore, the sound of the Higurashi, to me, is Hinamizawa. The sound reminded me that I wasn't supposed to be here. That I couldn't be here. That was when I heard the doorbell. Because there was a good distance between the house and the gate, there was both a doorbell and an intercom by the ladder. It had a security camera, too. Something as modern as a security camera monitor in this old-fashioned kitchen looked rather strange. I turned the switch, but nothing appeared on the monitor. I tried to check the plug, but there were a bunch of cords going behind the refrigerator, so I couldn't even do that. The doorbell continued to ring while I tried to figure out if the monitor was broken or if, I, or if I didn't know how to turn it on. Maybe it's divine intervention via Orishirasama. I only felt like answering the door depending on who it was. It'd normally be easier to pretend to be out, but that wouldn't help me. 
I was waiting for my enemies to show up. I couldn't just hide myself in that case. The hag was supposed to be sick and in an extremely bad mood. Wait a minute. Isn't this around the time that Rika vanishes, along with Satoko? Because Rika came to, um, get a soy sauce from you? I'd already sent word out that she didn't want to see anyone. So who could it be? I made up my mind and turned the intercom on. If it was someone unwanted, I could just turn whoever it was away. But I had to act normally so I wouldn't arouse suspicion. I had to act normally. Hi. Yep, I guessed right. She didn't tell me her name, but I recognized her voice. Soy sauce? I almost screamed, but I controlled myself. I took a moment to think about the situation. Hinamazawa was far from most stores, so sometimes neighbors would share seasoning and stuff with each other. The village sometimes gets snowed in during winter. But the Farood Shrine was quite far from this house. It was rather odd for her to come all the way here on her bicycle just to get some soy sauce. Maybe she was using it as an excuse. Maybe there was someone she wanted to talk to me about. You don't know about that about that little uh, advertisement flyer that uh, Mion put out about the soy sauce, did you? Or do you? That's when I noticed a piece of paper that was on the refrigerator door next to the intercom. We still have plenty of homemade soy sauce in stock. Feel free to come to the Sonozaki house if you want some. Okay, maybe it would. Maybe it was Uryu that made that sign. I don't remember. The hag must have given that flyer to everyone. One of our relatives sent her a barrel of soy sauce. If you want some, bring a container. That's what the flyer said. I see. This would explain it. There was a handwritten note on the bottom of the flyer. The soy sauce is in the storage area under the floor. Give them as much as they want. There was a storage area beneath the floor. When I opened it, I saw a barrel of soy sauce along a, alongside a funnel and a ladle. I didn't want Rika to notice anything suspicious at this point. I decided to share the soy sauce with her. Mm, yeah. So how exactly is this all gonna go ba go down, uh, go straight to hell? Because we know that uh, it's it's from uh, it's from uh, this meeting that Rika ends up disappearing, followed sh shortly by Satoko. What the hell is going to happen between Shion and Rika that's just going to make uh, Shion just bound and gag her? Wait a minute. I'm just now also remembering. She should have. Rika should also have that syringe, that that little syringe on her at this point too, shouldn't she? Maybe that syringe has something to will have something to do with uh, things going straight to hell. As I headed there, I heard the doorbell ring again. Me, People didn't pay much attention to safety around here in Hinamizawa. People didn't think too much about locking the doors. But as someone who's lived in a town, I've always locked everything. To let Rika Farood in, I'd have to go outside. Konbanwa 
こんばんは。Rika smiled at me. She was holding a huge soy sauce bottle. She acted like I never yelled at her, got violent for her, or made her cry at all today. Or perhaps she came to curry favor, thinking that she angered me. Dear Lady Mion, I am so sorry for angering you earlier with my fang with my fang ignorance. Please offer me soy sauce and forgiveness. I'm sorry, but、um, when, you, when, you, when I phrase it like that, it, the whole thing just sounds kind of silly. Like, wouldn't it, wouldn't, the, wouldn't it make more sense for the opposite to happen? Like, she'd be offering you soy sauce or something as tribute? I invited Rika to the front door. I told her to wait for a moment and tried to take the bottle. But Rika took her shoes off and walked into the house with a bottle in her hands. I just now. She has the syringe. She probably has the syringe on her right now. Something had to have happened he, during this encounter that ended up、uh, getting Rika killed later. And I'm just now remembering. She did promise Keiichi. Around this point, that she would take care of the rabid dog that's just going around、uh, killing people, killing and kidnapping people. Are you gonna, are you gonna do that? Is that, is, that what's, is that what happens here? Are you gonna try to subdue Xion here with that syringe? Barika took her shoes off and walked into the house with a bottle in her hands. Because if that's. Hey, the... hey, Because if that's what happened, then that definitely would explain how you got trapped here. Because Xion, understandably, would not like being attacked by a, by a, with a needle. I've had several lifetimes worth of experience pouring soy sauce into funnels, you know. She looked at me as if begging. I guess she wanted to pour the soy sauce into the bottle herself. I didn't want her to come into the house, but I suppose I didn't want her to wait there alone either. If she came to the kitchen with me, I could keep my eyes on her. And so, I brought Rika to the kitchen. We walked down the hallway. I only heard my footsteps. I stopped suddenly and turned around to make sure Rika was following me. Rika bumped into me. <laughs> I made sure she was right behind me and started to walk again. Tap, tap, tap. Tip, tip, tip. Tap, tap. Tip. Rika must have been having fun matching her footsteps to mine. Even when I quickly sped up, our footsteps matched perfectly. Tap, 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 tap. Tip, 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 tip. Tap, tap, tap. I stopped suddenly. Tip, tip, tip. Tip. Rika stopped suddenly too after taking an extra step. Rika, are you the extra set of footsteps that everybody keeps hearing throughout the question arcs? Have you been following Keiji around and Xion as well without them knowing? Serious question. When I turned around, Rika smiled at me. Our footsteps matched perfectly, and when I stopped suddenly, I heard her extra step. Maybe it's the footsteps that is going to set you off, because you're, gonna pro you're probably going to make the connection right here and right now. Hey, I heard footsteps like these before. And thus, well, you know. Two, two plus five equals fish. Therefore, Rika is my Rika is my enemy. 
therefore bound gag maim. I've experienced such footsteps before. It was making me uncomfortable. But now, although her footsteps sound the same as the other ones I'd experienced, I saw her when I turned around. That was the difference between them. I left the storage door open so I could see a soy sauce barrel. Yeah, unless she can... On second thought, unless she... Unless she's got... Unless she's always just right around the nearest hiding spot whenever anyone would turn around or she can sp spontaneously make herself invisible. I guess maybe not... She's. I guess maybe she's not those footsteps. I left the storage door open so we could see the soy sauce barrel. The memo said she can take as much as she wants, but I wasn't sure there was enough left. I crouched down and tried to open the lid of the soy sauce barrel. Even when I crouched down, I could hear Rika's extra step. Mm, See, Xion? I told you she could change facial expressions. Just look at this one. What does it make you feel? Unnerved, maybe? Because it's making me feel unnerved. When I turned around, Rika was very close to me. But... Huh? Who is this? I saw Rika. But it wasn't Rika at all. It was like when I switched with my sister. The outside was the same, but the inside was different. Did Rika have a twin sister? I was confused for a moment. That was when Rika sprayed something from a small bottle into my eyes. Pepper spray? <laughs> yep, I guess that answers that question. She is try she is just tries to take care of the rabid dog. I felt a terrible pain in my eyes, and suddenly tears poured out and my nose started to run. I couldn't stop sneezing either. As I stumbled around, covering my face, I then realized I was attacked. I shut my eyes tightly for a moment, then opened them again. Rika was about to grab my hair to drag me down, down onto the floor. When Rika saw me open my eyes, she sprayed at me again. I shut my eyes to avoid the spray, but my nose can still breathe in the substance. I avoid the pain in my eyes, but the tears, the runny nose, and the sneezing continued. Shit! Ah! My brain isn't working quickly enough! However, when I finally understood that I had been attacked by Rika Farood, my brain started to grind into motion. Rika knocked me on my back and got on top of me. I tried to escape from her by rolling on the kitchen floor. As I rolled, I hit an oven, a huge jar, and destroyed a pile of something on the floor as I fought back. But Rika didn't let go of me. She stayed on top and restrained me. She was sitting on my stomach, and I felt intense pain and pressure. She sure could fight well. I still couldn't see anything. Rika had the upper hand. My eyes were shut, and I was in real danger. As I tried to blink, I saw Rika's expression. I didn't know Rika Frood all that well. I only knew her from the few times we met, when I went to school as Mion, and from the things I've heard from other people. But as far as I knew, there was no way Rika Frood would ever do something like this. This is just impossible. Impossible. IMPOSSIBLE! No, I can't fill my head with that word! 
I have to calm down and figure out what to do next. Shit. I'm too much of a mess to even think. I tried to peek at her face again. She still had the spray bottle in one hand. What I didn't expect was the thing in her other hand. Syringe? How could I mistake it for anything else? It was definitely a syringe. I knew it! When Rika realized I regained my eyesight, she, she pointed the spray ball right at me and let loose with it. I shut my eyes tightly and tried to ignore the pain. But that, but that was when, even though I was blinded, Rika made a miscalculation. She had sprayed me from such a close distance that she inhaled a substance as well. Oh shit. I heard Rika sneeze and realized it was my chance. Even if I couldn't see, I knew she was right there. I hit Rika's face a few times. When I felt Rika's weight shift, I escaped. I then got my stun gun ready. Rika must have inhaled just a little of the spray. She wasn't sneezing anymore, and was glaring at me instead. <laughs> Rika's expression didn't change, but I was sure she was disappointed that her surprise attack was a failure. Rika flinched just a little, but she was still holding the spray ball and aiming it at my eyes. She was trying to use the spray first, and then give me the shot. I didn't know what was in that syringe, but it was a clear liquid. It had to be something bad. She wanted to take my eyesight, get on top of me, and then give me the shot. If whatever was in the syringe took a while to take effect, I might have the chance to fight back and seriously injure Rika. But Rika's surprise attack told me that, that just being injected was more than enough. In other words, whatever the effect, it would start to work immediately. Probably a tranquilizer. Therefore, I wouldn't be able to fight back against her. It'd probably either knock me out or kill me. In any case, what I had was equally deadly. My stun gun was very powerful. Just one shot would be all it took. What happened before was proof of his power. <laughs> Rika knew my stun gun was a lot more powerful than her spray. She was being extremely cautious. I threw a pile of newspapers at her. The pile wasn't tied together, so the newspapers flew all over Rika. I jumped at, at her immediately, and immediately after. I shoved my stun gun into her and pulled the trigger. Riga spasmed and fell to the floor. You fool! Hesitating in a fight where a single blow wins. I mean, amateurs just glare at each other. You don't have a single clue about how advantageous the first strike is when a single blow can decide everything. The spray ball rolled on the ground, but she still had the syringe. Rika was down, but I couldn't let my guard down either. I kicked her in the side and clambered on top of her. I took the syringe. I held Rika's arm, arms down and gave her the shot. My actions could hardly be called gentle. I injected her violently. I injected everything that was in the syringe. Rika began to convulse. I stood back and watched for what would happen to her body. Of course, I still had my guard up. While I assumed the drug would incapacitate her immediately, I didn't know what exactly what exact what I didn't know exactly what kind of reaction she would have. Ha! <laughs> 
After a few more convulsions, Rika unsteadily got to her feet. It's ridiculous. How can she even stand? I looked at my stun gun. Damn it! The power's on the lowest setting! Well, there's your answer. May have been readjusted when we were rolling around on the floor. I changed the setting to maximum. Rika turned pale and started sweating all over. I didn't know its effects, but if Rika had given me the shot, I'd be the one experiencing her symptoms. She looked really sick, so obviously she must have been feeling awful too. She couldn't even focus. She was very wobbly and had her hand on the wall. She lost her balance, and it must have been hard for her to even stand. She didn't look so brave anymore. Rika wobbled some more and moaned as if she was about to throw up. <laughs> Rika looked scary as she moaned and wobbled, but at the same time, she looked kind of funny too. Certainly, she hadn't even dreamed she'd be getting the shot herself. I wonder. As she, as the man, as the man sus, as the man sows, sows, excuse me, so shall he reap. That's what you get. <laughs> <笑>実に滑稽だね。笑えるよ。目が回ってるのかな。それとも息ができないのかな。あんたが後どのくらいでくたばるのか。見物するのも楽しい。ああ。でもそれじゃ拷問する楽しみがなくなるね。私さ、
It was a feeling of release when modern demons could stop pretending to be human. Yes, this was a mad banquet of demons with the savoring of blood and devouring of flesh. Attended by the head of the Farood family and the head of the Sozaki family, the old families whose blood is closest to the madness of the demons. I stood in the hallway so as to block her escape route. The windows had grates on it and the door had a safety chain on it. If she turned around, I'd hit her with my stun gun. In this situation, what did Rika Farood mean by taking her leave? I'm three sure it involves stab, stab, stab towards the self. Rika got her knife ready. I expected her to aim at my stomach when she attacked, so I took a stance with my stun gun ready in my hand. Rika, however, suddenly turned around. I carefully watched to see what her next move would be. Rika, Rika put the handle of the knife to the wall and held it in place. What's she doing? Rika reared her head back and slammed her throat against the knife on the wall. Good God! Her blood spattered all over. Rika bent backwards repeatedly and let the and let the knife slash at her throat. Again and again. Her neck and chest were dyed red. I always thought blood was darker. But her blood wasn't dark. It was so bright. I must have been confused, but it looked pretty. After doing this several times, Rika turned around. Her eyes were wide open. She didn't look like she was from this world. Her face looked like something both living and dead, both real and artificial. It was very scary, eerie, and above all else, pale. Although her face looked unearthly, it was a very appropriate it was a very appropriate face for a demon. I didn't have a mirror so I couldn't tell, but I was sure I looked exactly like her. Rika continued to violently slash her throat. It reminded me of someone trying to break a huge pot piece of ice with an ice pick. That was exactly what Rika looked like. The white ships of ice fo coolly flying through the air. What I saw before me was a beautiful sight. Every time Rika stuck her, struck her throat, tiny drops of red blood spattered the boring white world around her. It was like a dance. A dedication dance by the final head of the Farood family. The demon's last dance of dedication to Orishirasama. Upon seeing that literally blood curdling dance, I let out a fierce roar. I had no reason to do so. I was howling like an animal. We were animals trying to kill each other, both getting covered in blood, and, inevitably, as one convulsed in a pool of that blood. The other threw back its head and howled. My body shivered with the joy I felt inside of me. This was death, the most final of judgments, and it was right before me. The demons howled, screamed, and roared. The roars faded, and my voice started to change from the voice of a demon back to that of a human. As a demon, I roared, but as a human, I sneered. Rika was covered in blood from her neck down. Her blood was pouring out, making a little noise. 
Rika was still staring into my eyes. I stared back at her. I wasn't sure they were still eyes, though. They were no longer human eyes, but the eyes of the dead. Rika. No, Rika's corpse vomited blood from her mouth and nose and smiled. Then, she dropped the knife. She stuck her hands out and turned her palms upward. Her wiggling fingers reminded me of an insect's legs. Those fingers reached for her own throat. I'd never seen anything like it. I'd never seen anybody do this before. Because Rika was scratching her own throat. She was ripping her own throat apart. Rika? You're fucking hardcore. Maybe that wasn't a good description. She was trying to rip out the inside of her throat through the opening she'd made with the knife. Her fingers found the biggest tear. Rika smiled. At least that's what I would have called it if she were alive. She ripped open the tear in one tug. <gasps> Upon hearing my scream, Rika died and fell on her face into the pool of blood. That was it. She didn't get up again to show me her throat. I stepped back from Rika Farood's body and bumped into the wall in the hallway. God fucking damn Rika, you are hardcore. I mean, I thought you would just, I don't know, try to stab yourself in the heart or something and just be quick and efficient about it, but I suppose you wouldn't have really had, necessarily had the strength to do a, a, a full strength thrust into yourself, so you just literally chipped away at your own neck and god damn... Well, at least she definitely won't get the satisfaction of killing you now. I roared again in admiration of the ritual dance of dedication of the head of the Farood family. Joy ran through my body, and my blood rushed through my veins. I then realized I disposed of the heads of the three families, the core of the curse of Arishirasama. Everything was finally exposed. The curse of Arishirasama and its masterminds were all exposed. I still don't know about that. I suppose of the leaders of the three families, who all killed Satoshi-kun. The head of the Sonzaki family died of a heart attack. She was at the bottom of the well, along with a, along with a wheelchair. I apprehend the head of the Kimiyoshi family. He'd continue to tiptoe until he died. The head of the Farood family died in a way that was perfect for the final head of the three families of Onikafuchi. I did it. I accomplished my mission. I defeated all the masterminds who killed Satoshi-kun with the curse. Every one! Satoshi-kun, you were powerless. You didn't have the means to fight back. Those evil people simply sneered while they let you die after marking you as a member of the cursed Hojo family. 
I will never, ever forgive them! They believed you deserved to die because you were one of the Hojos. As long as it was done by the curse of Urshiro-sama, they didn't care how you were killed. I will never forgive those people for creating this world! What could I have done to save you, Satoshi-kun? I couldn't save you. Shion Sonozaki couldn't do anything else at the time. If I was Mion, not Shion. If I was Mion that day, I could have saved you. Mion could have saved you! I really don't know about that. That's right, I remember now. Shion! She said she wanted to eat red snapper sashimi that day. I was supposed to eat that, but Shion pouted and cried. That was why I let her switch. Just for that night! I did it to make her happy, like a big sister would. Shion was never treated well, so I felt bad. That was it. I was being a good sister. That was it. When morning came, the world had been turned upside down and remained so until today. We weren't twins anymore. The one the demon was me on, and the one without the demon was she on. What was that supposed to mean? Wait, wait, Mom, listen! I'm me on, not her! You can tell us apart, right, Mom? Look, can't you tell I'm Mion? Come on, everyone, tell me I'm Mion! I'm Mion! Don't call me Shion! I'm Mion! I am! その時、私はハッキリ悟ったよ。あんたは知っていたんだ。あの夜、新類たちが集まって何をするのか、ただの宴会じゃないって知っていたんだ。知らない、知らない。本当に知らなかったの。あんた、あの日だけ嫌にしつこく絡んできたじゃない。タイの刺身なんて食べたことない。食べてみたい。いつもミオンばかりずるい私にもって。普段なら大人しく納得するくせに、
ミヨンであることがこんなにも素晴らしいなんて。Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think I've got, I've, I think I've just about gotten my confirmation, more or less, that my theory, about my theory, that maybe、uh, the Shion that was in the cell when Keiichi was brought down to the underground torture chambers was actually Mion this whole time, and、uh, Mion was actually Shion. All part of it, probably all part of a sick game. The only thing that's keeping me from that, the only thing that's keeping me from saying that, that that is most certainly what's happened is I have yet to see a scene where, is I have yet to see a scene arranged in advance that that would indicate that that would kind of prove it. Like, hey, if you don't want anything else to happen to your, if you don't want anything else to happen to what's left of your friends or your beloved Keiichi. Be a good girl and pretend and be a good girl and be Shion. It's all coming together now. I think your, fo- your head is as, fo- as the foggiest it's- it has ever been, Mion.、Um, <laughs> Mion-san, called me sis. And so, I was Mion! Ah! The demon who had been asleep inside of me was finally allowed to wake up. If everything I've seen up until now was just a demon being asleep, then what? Then, goddamn! The demon roared, and my whole body shivered to express its joy. Sion, Anta には罪がある Anta は今までミヨンだった Child protection agencies, guardianship, guardianship laws, all that stuff would have made it very difficult for anyone to have come in and intervened in the, in the abusive household. That was the Hojo house. No, you couldn't. Shion was shaking on the other side of the bars. それを思いつくまでのわずかな日々をいつ殺されるのかどう殺されるのかに怯えながら過ごすがいい簡単には殺さない無ごたらしく殺す殺した後は聡くんと同じ井戸に放り投げてやるそして聡くんにあの世で
うちのリカがお邪魔してませんこと Ah,、uh, yes. Ever since the Toko Hojo was abandoned, she had been living with Rika for Rude. Of course, she gets suspicious that Rika has, hadn't returned yet. Ah, here you are. Oh, what are you doing? It's a little bit of time. Hey, Sato, I'm going to go to the house. 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 Reina was just spot on, on on her whole theory regarding everything that happened down to a freaking T. Good lord. Satoko no boom, Aru Karasa. Rika chan wa mo tabete ryo. Mo Rika tara. Wakari masta wa. Jotto kazazuki o stekara maari masu wa ne. Dewa, gome a sabase. Um. Matte ru kara ne. Ja. Oh, son of a bitch. If Satoshi is dead, he is probably just rolling and screaming in his,、um, in his grave right now. I know I'd be. Keiichi! Saki kara yonderu zo! Deiwa da! Sono Zaki san kara! その崎さんってどっちあれ妹そんなのは知らん自分で出て聞きなさいももしもし見ようかしようか私ですシオンですこんばんはシオンその夕べはすまなかったつい興奮して He must have been worried about how I hung up the phone so suddenly last night. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good person. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good person. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good person. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good person. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good person. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good person. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good person. I'm not sure if I'm going to be a good person. I heard Keiji swallow loudly. Dewa. 昨日の続きを話しますもう怒らないで聞いてくれますよねああ大丈夫だケイチ agreed to be quiet and listen I explained the dangerous situation to ケイチ was, was in once again just like how some evil people in the village attacked Takano-san and Tomotaki-san they might attack us any day it was ironic of course that while I was warning him I was also the one who made sure the curse would fall upon him. では。まずは言い出した私から行きます最近誰かに監視されているような気がしますえ I was making this up You sure about that? Cause I mean you've been kind of having a presence following you around for、uh, days on end now You know the same one that you've been thinking has been Satoshi for a good, for a good bit You know before your excursion into、uh, the ritual storehouse I was making this up. I just want him to realize how urgent the situation was. To it, demo, kino se kamo siremasen. Demo itio hoko kushimas. Ima wa kino se da to motte i maskedo. Mosimo ke chan mo onaji yoni. Dareka ni kan si sarete iru yoni kan ji ru nara. Kore wa kino se ja nai no kamo siremasen kara. So, so yu koto nara an sen shiro. Skunak tomo. Ore no ho wa dai jobu da. It seems like nothing had happened to Keiichi today, at least. Now that the heads of all, of all three families were gone, it was possible the curse system had been destroyed entirely. 
um, Xion. Just because you, ch you ju just because you cut off the chicken's head doesn't mean that the body is just going to go limp right away. If that was the case, then Keiji might not be attacked after all. But there was someone who did want to attack him. That meant part of the system was still alive. In other words, my mission wouldn't be accomplished just yet. Keiji is like a litmus test in this situation. I'd know whether or not all my enemies were gone depending on if Keiji got bitten. He sure is a very useful man. More useful than you ever were. Teehee. After that, I went along with what Keiji said. I made sure he was fearful of Mion, as well as all the three families. I explained to him the possibility that the whole village was involved, and that the curse of Oishira sama might be some sort of system. Then I remembered Shion wouldn't know too much about the disappearance of the mayor, so I continued. <laughs> なんだ、しよん。聞いてないのか何も知らないです。お父さんが電話で何でそんな大事な話を先にしてくれなかったんですかわ、悪い。もう知ってると思ってたんだよ。隠す気なんかなかった。けいちゃん。私どうしよう。どうした話せよ。俺たちの間で隠し事はなしだろ。ごめん。
If only he hadn't said anything to insult Satoshi-kun. Right, because um, his own ill opinions of Satoshi-kun and how that and how you would respond to to said opinions in such a violent way that was all his fault he should have known better than to say that around you the person who he thought was me on rather than she on the one who actually had a thing for him at the time oh poor mayor poor silly un silly old mayor you really should have been paying attention more Fuck you, Shion. Watashi,打ち上げてしまったから。よせよ、シオン。シオンのせいじゃないよ。いえ。私のせいなんです。私が打ち上げてしまったから。君よしのおじいちゃんが知ってしまったから。だから殺されてしまったに違いないんです。だ
ちょっとリカちゃんのことが心配になっちゃってあはいそんなに心配でしたらぜひ電話を Now I want you to stop and think about this for a second, Shion. In your, in your mind, Rika was part of the curse system that, you, that you've been fighting to destroy in order to avenge Satoshi. And,、uh, you've, been, and you've been also thinking that、uh, Keiichi was a potential target for this system after you guys broke into that storehouse together. If, that's, if that were true, And that, and that Rika is one, the, is one of the people that would end up carrying out this system. What sense would it make then for the,、uh, for the, uh, the would be target to go to, to go to one of the people who would, be, who would be responsible for carrying out this system, listen to the concerns and fears that, they'd have, that they had to say regarding, I'm, regarding or the possibility of being killed for their transgression, tell, and then respond to said target? That they would take care of it and to, not wor and, and to not worry. Why not just kill him right then and there? Seriously, think about this for a second, Shion. If Rika wanted Keiichi dead, what sense would it make for her to, for her to spare him and then go after you? Think, woman, think! Keishi hung up roughly. What a hilarious conversation with Keiichi. Everything was just too damn funny. Keiichi Meibara. Go ahead and struggle helplessly. Run all over the village and see if the curse is still alive. Go ahead and see if my enemies are still around. I laughed for a while and then calmed down. I already got rid of the bicycles and shoes belonging to Rika and Satoko. My house was, for the moment, taken care of. I could expect Keiichi to run around in a panic, to ask for help for, from someone, and then ultimately come to me on. More than likely, the youth group would end up looking for Rika like they did with the mayor. I'd probably have to endure another long night again, knowing nobody would find her. I sighed to wait until the phone rang. I killed time by watching TV until I did. Kei chan, Honki de itteno? Moshi Jodan da tara, canari o o r i o I scold Keiichi for suspecting that Rika had disappeared. Mi chan, Honto ni Jodan da tana ra, o o r u n j a n a k w a r a o y o Da te Jodan nan da kara. 私たちはそれが冗談であることを確かめなくちゃいけないそうだね機嫌の悪そうなことを言ってごめんリーナリブーリーナリブーキミバックミ While she looked quiet I felt that she could be very terrifying under her skin I had no basis for that impression but I still felt that way I just didn't like her. I disliked her ever since that rainy day at the bus stop. It wasn't that we didn't get along, though. How should I put it? I was at a loss for how to explain. Ah, that was it. I found a good example. When I was little, I always wanted to play tennis. I had my relatives take me to a tennis court, and they all praised my skill. I was doing nothing more than hitting a ball of a racket. But they told me I was talented, and that made me happy. When I went to school, I told my classmates I played tennis, and they told me I was talented too. Then, one of my classmates, who was usually very quiet, said she also played tennis. 
Not only did she play, but she took lessons. Although I bragged about my serve, I was no match for her. I felt lonely and insulted at everyone's paying attention to her and, and not me. You just can't stand being not being you just can't stand being this not being the center of attention, huh? <laughs> she was usually very quiet, but suddenly I realized that she knew more and had a lot more experience than me. Ran at the bus stop was just like that. I thought of myself as a demon now. I'd awaken a part of me that was half human and half demon. The part that lived in Onigafuchi Village. In fact, I'd already stepped into a world where normal humans couldn't go. I'd already surpassed my human limits. I genuinely thought of myself as a superior being, having transcended the realm of mortals. But, when I, my eyes met with Reina Ryugu's, I felt what I did long ago, with tennis. Why? Why did I feel that way with Reyna? I heard that in the animal world, during battle, animals glare at each other to display their strength. Only humans have to punch or kick each other to feel superiority or inferiority. Most animals can tell just by glaring at each other. In that case, could it be the same with Reyna? Mi-chan, daijoubu? Ah, ah, gome. Ora-san, kino kara nebusoku de. Gome. Keiichi climbed up a ladder and tried to peek into the window on the second floor where Rika and Satoko lived. It was my job to hold down the ladder. Reina cautioned me to hold on to it tightly. Mi-chan, watashi nen no tame, hontaku no hou mo mite kuru ne. Rana, Rana ran off after that. When I looked up, I saw Keiji trying to open a window, but all of them were locked. Keiji asked me from the top of the ladder. Fuldeke リカちゃんのご両親って亡くなってるんだよな。サトコも親はいないよ。親白様のたたりってことで、両親が崖から落っこちてね。お兄さんだったサトシ君もいなくなっちゃって。サトシって前に聞いた名前だな。He heard the name before. I felt anger growing inside me. What is Satoshi not allowed to learn the name? I mean. Keiichi, not allowed to learn of Satoshi's name. Don't you know whose desk you're using every day? You act as if it belongs to you. You drop food on it while eating lunch. It's not. I don't think he chose that seat necessarily. You drool on it while taking a nap. Don't you know who it really belongs to? Why am I acting this way? I'm Mion. Satoshi-kun doesn't even exist anymore. He was demoned away. It was, it's hardly Keiji's fault that he didn't know. It really isn't his fault. Satoko-wa-Rika-chan-to-issho-ni-kono-koya-de-kura-shite-ru-nda-yo. After everyone Satoko's family died, she started living with Rika. It only made sense. Satoko and Rika were best friends. They didn't care about the Hojo family or the Farood family. They had been best friends since before the dam conflict. The reason why the curse never fell upon Satoko. Rika Farood probably had a lot to do with it. That made more sense than anything else, at least. Satoko was pardoned from the curse of the Hojo family. 
All thanks to Rika Farood's arrangements. Satoko had never been a victim on the night of Watanagashi. According to the curse system I'd uncovered, the last survivor of the Hojo family still living in Mizawa would be the perfect target for this year's curse. Therefore, whoever was responsible for executing the curse must have tried to take her life. However, nothing happened to her, proving that Satoko had escaped from the curse. That was really and truly infuriating. She might have been the head of the Farood family, but I still couldn't accept that such a little girl had enough power to protect her best friend. Mion. No, actually, Shion. Shion must have had the same power then! Just like Rika protected Satoko, Shion could have protected Satoshi! Damn it. Damn it. Rika chan mo, Satoko mo, taihen nan da na. Noroare te rin da yo. Eh? Mion, omae ima, nan te itta? Noroare te rin te itta no. Mion, omae, nan te kao shten da yo. Hojo Satoko wa ne. I can't accept that Satoko was pardoned from the curse, although she was a member of the cursed Hojo family. She was the one, one of the cursed Hojos! Satoshi kun wasn't pardoned, but Satoko was! She was cursed, but she got away! She escaped the curse, but Satoshi kun didn't. I can't accept that! In fact, Satoko should have been the one to be, to be cursed the most! She cornered Satoshi kun physically and emotionally. Physically and emotionally? Okay, I'm not gonna repeat myself. Just, just continue with your rant. That was why things got weirder and weirder. And in the end, everything went crazy. When I think back on it, it was Satoko who I hated most of all. She cornered Satoshi Kun. What's with this? I pretty sure I have the the censorship thing off, yes. And as a result, Satoshi Kun disappeared. She started it. She caused it. Wait, so you're so okay. You're saying that she was ultimately the one that caused Satoshi to disappear? How? By just being a brat? If only she hadn't been there. Just as Rika Furu and Satoko had lived happily. Maybe there had been a happy future for me too. Maybe Satoshi Kun and I could have started our lives together in Okinomiya. Yes, if I look at both the beginning and the end, it's so obvious. Satoko's existence caused everything. Satoshi Kun had to kill his aunt because of Satoko. The three families used that need to create the curse. And then they killed him! The police were convinced he just ran away, but he'd never do that. He was the type of person who'd always did his best at everything. All by himself. He was doing the very best he could for his only sister, yet he was forced to vanish. He worked so hard for Satoko, and though he was living just for her, he was erased. Poor Satoshi-kun. He was so underappreciated. That girl knew no gratitude. She was cursed. If you got near her, you'd meet the same fate. You'd be cursed to die, or disappear. That was really it. She was the main cause behind it all. She wormed her way into Rika Farood's good graces, and that was why why the curse fell upon Satoshi Kun. Are you f fucking listening to yourself right now? Are you saying that? Are you actually saying that that Satoko actually? Pulled a favor with with Rika in order to get her brother sacrificed instead of her? The same brother that she relied to protect her from her abusive aunt and uncle. She should have died first. 
Like, I want to make sure I'm understanding you right. If that's what you're saying, then... Then Satoshi-kun would still be alive. If he was alive, I could have done something for him. I can't forgive her. I can't forgive Satoko. I can't forgive that girl. There can be no peace of her. There can be no peace. She was the perfect target for the curse of 1983. The curse of Orishiro-sama. Rika Farood, the reincarnation of Orishiro-sama. Rika was dead. The reincarnation of Orishiro-sama had died. There was no more god in Hinamazawa to deliver the curse. I'm the one who has to deliver it now. I am Neon Sonazaki, the head of the Sonazaki family, one of the three families of Onikafuchi. Now that all heads of the three, uh, all of the three families are gone, there is nobody sur to surpass me. I will deliver the curse of Orishirasama and nobody else. I'll deliver it. I am the curse. I have become Orishirasama. I felt hot bubbles boiling deep over inside of me. I could tell the demon inside of me wanted to roar. I got another question for you. Are you still working to try to avenge Satoshi at this point? To try to take vengeance against everyone that did wrong to him? Or is this now all about you? And everyone who you feel has slighted, who has slighted you in some way via Satoshi? Do you actually think Satoshi would want would want you to do this? I know I've asked you that question repeatedly, but seriously, stop for a minute. Consider what he would want from you. Honestly and truly. I noticed Keishi was looking down at me. Calm down, Mion. He can't tell what you're thinking. I'm pretty sure he has a good idea. I know I did. Calm down, calm down. At that point, I heard footsteps coming closer. I saw four or five adults, accompanied by Reina, running towards us with flashlights in their hands. One of them opened the lock on the cabin door, and we all went inside. Of course, there was nobody there. Satoko and Rika lived alone. I doubt Satoko would have left a note saying she was going over to the Sonozaki house when Rika was there already. But it wouldn't be fun if she had. Because of that, I hurried into the room ahead of Rain and make sure there was nothing left behind. The rumor of Rika and Satoko's disappearance spread around the village quickly. More and more villagers gathered at the Farood Shrine. Acting in place of the head of the Sonozaki family, I commanded them to search the village. The villagers nodded and scattered. How long has it been since the last time I was truly Mion? I felt so pleased that my body almost went numb. Lots of villagers went in and out of the shrine. They yelled at each other that she was nowhere to be found. Some suggested other places to look, and they all left. They made a lot of noise with their comings and goings. Members of the Women's Association brought out huge pots and gas cookers from the storage and got ready to cook for the men. That was when I noticed Keiichi unsteadily walking toward a copse of dark pine trees. What was he thinking? How stupid of him to be alone on a night like this. If the person responsible for executing the curse was nearby, he wouldn't come back safely. ミオンちゃん、お邪魔行けの方もぐるっと探したけど、全然ダメだね。池の中も照らしたけど、明るくなんないとわかんないよ。うん、ありがとうございます。藤人部の皆さんがお味噌汁を作ってくれてますので、召
ないんだよね二人のどこかに行っちゃったんだろうかね自転車で遊びに行ったなら遠くかもしれんな街かだとすると日な見沢の中にはいないかもしれんなそういえばリカちゃまがいなくなったってのは誰が最初に気づいたんだんああケイちゃんだけど急に虫が知らせたんだとか前原屋敷のせがれさんかうんーなんや怪しいなそういえば前原家は来てないのかこの一大事の時に前原家は懲戒未加入だから青年団の連絡網に入ってないんよなあ吸ったらんしょうがなあれ入ったろ懲戒あああれさね連絡網に名前が載ってないだけんとちゃう連絡網を新年に作ったきりやんね途中から越してきたから載ってない前原のせがれさんの虫の知らせってのがどうもな第一発見者が一頭怪しい言うやんねそのせがれはどこ行ったんかいねさっき松林の方にフラフラ行くのを見たよ誰か呼んでくる Conveniently, I saw Keiichi and Reina walking back toward us. Keiichan, where did you go? Keiichan was not going to be able to get out of here. It's a man. It looks like nothing had happened to Keiichi. If so, that's fine. That means I took care of all my enemies. Then you would have no need oh, no, yeah, to act, yeah. enact the role of, of the curse's enforcer, then. So, please. Stop! Oishi Nioi ga tadayotte kuru to omotta ra. Kore wa zehi go shoban ni azukaritai desu ne. I heard the loud, sticky voice of a middle aged man. It was Oishi. He must be confused about this year's incident. The scale of the curse this time is nothing like the previous ones. Wuxi's information network is about equal to, or better than that of the elders, on the town council. In other words, he could easily uncover a rumor that was circulating through the underside of the village. He must have come here to see if the disappearances of Kimiyoshi and Rika had something to do with the changing of the lock on the ritual storehouse's door. The police will come for me sooner or later. I am Mion Sonozaki. By removing all the heads of the three families, my enemies, I have become the head in their place. I can't allow Mion Sonozaki to continue existing. I'll have to destroy the existence of the head of the Sonozaki family. When I destroy my own position, that's when my revenge will come to an end. More than likely, I'll have Uushi witness my final moments. My eyes and Uushi's met. Damn it, he thinks I'm suspicious already. You're right, Uushi. I did it. Mion Sonozaki, the head of the Sonozaki family, is the culprit. <laughs> New tips unlocked, page 195 and 196. All right, let's delve into your notebook of crazy some more, shall we? Rika Farood. She was the head of the Farood family, but she never ap even appeared at most important meetings. Even when she did show up, nobody would ask for her opinion, so it never really mattered if she was there or not. A legend in the Farood family says that if their firstborn child is a girl for eight generations in a row, that eighth girl would be the reincarnation of orishiro sama According to Takano-san's research, Rika Farood is very likely to be the one. Surely she must be an important icon in the cult of orishiro sama the true believers are devoted to her. 
So, it's quite surprising to me that Rika Farood herself was the assassin. It's unbelievable. It's just too abnormal. Probably because she wasn't the assassin? Have you ever considered that? Usually, a VIP like her wouldn't be the one to assassinate someone. It's possible that it was a Rika Farood look-alike. From the way she moved, she seemed experienced in fighting. It's not normal that a small girl like her would jump would jump me without faltering. Well, she's not an or she is far from an ordinary young child, so there's that. But you don't know that. I just got lucky because I had a stun gun. Without it, I don't know what would have happened. She was far more skilled than she looked. Was she trained as an assassin? Or was it a body double? Everything is a mystery, including that creepy syringe. What's going on? I can't understand. She was like an apparition or something. Did Oryu Sonzaki know of her existence? What is hiding on the underside of this village? The underside might run much deeper than I thought. I'm quite certain you're right about that, if nothing else. At this point, I believe I can complete my revenge by destroying the curse system entirely. That means I have to eliminate the heads of all the three families, the successor Shion, and the assassins who are after Keiichi. Although Keiichi is completely unguarded, he hasn't been attacked so far. Even though I told everybody that he was one of the trespassers. In fact, it's me who's being attacked. Rika Farood attacked me. According to my theory, Keishi should be make for a very attractive bait. But nobody has done anything to harm him. Since Rika Farood attacked me, it might be that opposing the, fam the Farood family is a great taboo than trespassing in the ritual storehouse. Rika said that that intrusion wasn't a big deal. She sounded like she was going to let Keishi walk. And after I accused her of that, Rika Farood attacked me that very night. Are there two different factions? You're kind of forgetting what Keiichi told you earlier. You know, about going to Rika with his concerns that he might be on somebody's hit list. And that she would take care of it. Does one handle trespassers in the ritual storehouse, while the other protects the religious doctrines of the Farood family? No, that doesn't make sense. Tomotaki-san's death must have been caused by the Farood family's injections. Rika showed me the effect of it herself, clawing out her own throat and dying like that. But Tomotaki-san shouldn't have been subject to the curse, at least according to the system of the Farood family. I don't understand why Keiichi hasn't been attacked. Did he have something exempting him from the curse, unlike Takano-san? Here's another idea. Maybe somebody did. Yeah, maybe some. Maybe, maybe someone went went and killed Tomotake and Takano. In that case, I believe it was Takano who killed Tomotake, and Takano may very likely have staged her own death through uh, through using her position as a nurse to fage, to forge some DNA documents or something. I made a theory about it a while ago. I don't remember which video I it, it was that I explained it on in the earlier chapters, but yeah. Basically, it's it may, it may be possible that she's actually still alive, as far as I'm concerned. I don't, it, it may be a bit unlikely, but still possible. Otherwise, well, she probably just burned herself in that drum. But yeah, anyway, as I was saying, so maybe you should consider 
that uh, that uh, Tomataki and Takano and Takano Sen were were done by par were indeed done in by another party. In this case, being Takano, or anybody really that isn't that isn't them, and that everyone else who has vanished and disappeared since then was solely because of what you've been doing. And everybody is just simply responding to your attacks by attacking you in turn, and that's the reason why Keiichi hasn't done, hasn't been atta himself attacked in any way, because he hasn't really done anything to warrant such an attack, like what Rika suggested, which would mean Rika was basically telling the truth. Basically, where I'm going with this is, I think your whole assumption about this whole thing is very, very wrong. Just like how Omi Satoko Hojo was spared. Keiichi's a friend of Rika Farood's. So, does that mean if you were close to her, you wouldn't be cursed? Was she more important than the whole system? That's impossible. The hag was at the top of the cursed system. Rika couldn't have been higher up than her. Scribble, scribble. Are there multiple ways to determine the subject of the curse? Are there as many curse execution groups as there are subjects? And do they all work separately? That's a mess. None of my theories add up. If I mess up my reasoning, I might make the wrong person the target of my revenge. I don't understand who the enemy is, or how Satoshi-kun was made to disappear. How much did the hag know? It really was a huge loss. I have so many things I wanted to ask her. I killed her by accident. Shit. In that respect, I've already failed in my revenge. The underside of Hinamazawa really does run too deep. Scribble, scribble. The whole page is blacked out with scribbles. I, you're, I think she's just becoming more and more unstable with each passing day. Probably just from all her rampant speculation. She's literally driving herself mad trying to figure this self out. <sighs> I don't know what else to say at this point other than Jesus fucking Christ, Shion. Get a fucking grip. She is just losing all semblance of perspective here. She's kind of losing the plot. Big time. On all, on all these tiny little details that would answer a lot of the questions that she keeps raising up. Not all of them, of course, like about this curse system and all that, but at least a fair amount. And I think those answers, in turn, would, have done, would do a great job if she actually stopped to consider them. And making her think, maybe my whole theory about this might have a few more holes than I thought they did. Maybe I need to start from the beginning and think things over. You, yeah, I mean, you'd still have to deal with the fact that you got a bunch of dead bodies on your hands now. As a result of, uh, undo uh, un as a result of more than a few wrong assumptions here and there, but still. It's not too late. To realize that you might that you just might have been wrong about a few things up till this point. That just maybe you don't have all the answers. Anyway, I believe we're getting close to the climax of this whole of this whole mess, aren't we? I think it I think in the, at this point it's like either the ne either the next day or the day after. That uh, Keiichi and Reina go to confront go to confront me on about what she's done. We're getting there.
I think I'm going to go ahead and end things here. And we'll just continue to watch uh, Xion descend uh, further and further into her own, uh, in her own pit of madness in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this latest episode of Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 5. If you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I will see you all next time. Take care, and everybody say a, uh, everybody say a, a little bit of pr and everybody give a little um, well, not prayer, but express sympathy for all of Xion's victims because I'm sure at least half of them did absolutely nothing wrong. Poor bastards.